Hello there, I'm Sarah from Seventeen once again, introducing you to my Dark Souls video walkthrough. We're back in, I say back, we've just officially landed in Isolith, I believe. We've made our way through the Demon Ruins, and now that we have the orange charred ring, we need to equip that because the rest of this video is going to be me traversing through lava. And I might have to lower the game volume for this video because when you run through lava, for some reason the entire brass symphony kicks up and it makes a lot of noise. But it doesn't take off a lot of damage, it's, it's kind of like being poisoned. Uh, the thing to bear in mind is this is an area that definitely benefited from patches because we're about to traverse through an area that has about 30 of those torsos, those crate. I say I keep saying torsos, they're not actually torsos, they're the lower halves, they're the, the abdominal and leg area of the the T-Rexes, and I don't know what they're called. Uh, I've never really checked them out, because if I'm honest, I've never killed them. Uh, there's too many, they don't give enough souls in my opinion, and they're very dangerous. And what you have to do here is you have to run through this area, trying not to, to get killed by these two here. Once you run past these two, you're safe. And I actually figured out a really good way of doing this. If you have an eagle shield that's powered up like I do, if you put it on and you run with your shield up on this section, you will get past these guys without being stunned. But what I try to do is I try to jump out of the influence of their stun and they catch me, as you can see. So I'm just spamming roll, spamming roll for all I'm worth. And because I don't have the dart with grain ring, this is a little bit more hairy than it needs to be. So, once you're on this platform, run all the way around here because they will follow you onto this area. You need to go around the corner to get break line of sight and step in here. Once you're in here, you can heal, and then the rest of this is pretty easy. But if only I'd have noticed to, to run with my shield up, I just, I never think to do it. I didn't even know you could do it until late, and it's something that I should really utilize a lot more. Uh, that is a soul of a great hero, which is the highest consumable soul, aside from a boss soul. It's uh, exceptionally good. I think it's 20,000 souls, that one. And if you're going to be doing anything along the lines of the dragon head glitch, which a lot of people look down on, but uh, I personally think it is a legitimate way to, you know, upgrade or buy things if you're just playing for fun. If you're not doing a challenge run or you're not, you know, your first few times through the game, that is probably the best soul to do that with. I'm not going to show you how to do it because it's one of those things where uh, I'm generally against glitches which you know, break games or affect games in such a way that they enable you to do things you shouldn't be able to do, but uh, I do think that these glitches are actually quite beneficial. As far as the PvP aspect goes, they do make some of the PvP a little hairy, which is a shame because it could have been a lot more fun. But. You know, everybody's got their own opinion on glitching. For instance, uh, I'm an—I used to be quite a, an achievement whore, and I loved getting achievements. I'm not quite as bad these days because I kind of lost my lust for it. But I refused to glitch any achievements because I felt it was cheating. And anybody that's listened to my videos or listened to my commentaries or seen the type of stuff I do on my channel will know that I avoid cheating as much as possible because I like to challenge myself and if you cheat you remove the challenge so you're getting all the benefits without any of the trial and to me that's pointless because half of the fun is the trial and I don't glitch for anything other than something that's beneficial for instance a glitch I have done is on Fallout I can't remember if it's Fallout 3 I think it's Fallout 3 in the broken uh, broken Steel DLC, you could kind of glitch jump up a wall, which technically is manipulating jump geometry and the way they've programmed the game, so it's not much of a glitch. But you get to the back of the graphics, you run around a bunch of mountains, and you can actually find a prototype weapon that the developers must have put into test and forgot to take out, which is pretty cool. And I have used all the glitches on this game. I've used the, the bottomless box, and I've used the dragon head glitch, and... I do think they're useful, and I can understand why people don't like them, but I've got to the point where I've invested so much time in this game that I don't feel guilty for using them, so that's how I look at it. But massive tangent about glitches for no real reason. Uh, make sure you have the orange char ring on for all of this, you can take it off now. Make sure you hit that secret bonfire I just rolled into a moment ago, and this is the short and kind of anticlimactic area of Isolith. And it actually brings a, an interesting factor about Dark Souls that I'd, I'd like to to put out there to get people's opinion on. So, I love this game, and I love all of it. 
there are parts I find a little bit annoying and there are parts that I think could have been you know, done differently and better. One thing that resounds around the entire game is as big as Dark Souls is, as rich and detailed as it is, it's kind of small. And don't misconstrue what I mean by this, it's got a good sense of scale, it's got a, a rich and diverse amount of arenas, but this is a good example. We've just traversed into a, a proper area now. This is like the, the city of Ivan, effectively. And all it is, is uh, this little thoroughway that we've just ran up, this staircase up here, and about three balconies and a basement. It's, it's smaller than the, the Firelink Shrine. And I don't understand why some of the places weren't a little bit bigger. And there is a toss-up in game design. I would rather an area be too small than too big because there is nothing worse than traversing through an area that actually feels like it's been artificially expanded. And a really good reference right now, which is very topical, is Darksiders 2. The thing I hated about Darksiders 1 was that ev towards the middle, towards the end of the game, like the, the three-fourths through the game, you went from dungeon to dungeon to dungeon. There was none of the do a dungeon, then explore, then find some new people, find a bit of story, do a little combat, traverse a new environment, back into a dungeon. There was no gap between the dungeons, so the game itself became fucking dungeon, 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 dungeon. And before you knew it, you did three dungeons in a row. And I don't like that at all, because I like a good pace. I like it to be you know, set out in such a way that I don't realise that I'm in a dungeon again, that I don't realise I'm looking for keys and fucking maps and shit. And Darksiders 2 is took what I hated and made a game on it. And don't get me wrong, it's an extremely well made game that has some problems in its pacing and things, but you just get the feeling that some areas are elongated and they didn't need to be. It would have been such a smoother, you know, a smoother time and much more fun if you didn't go to every fucking location and the my dog's barking now. God damn, I hate that stupid dog. But as I was saying, sorry, you go to all these locations, you see something, maybe talk to an NPC and you think, oh, that was kind of cool, maybe I'll move on to a new area now. But instead, it's always, oh, now you have to collect three things. And it happens far too often, and it happens often enough for you to actually see the mechanics. And if you're noticing the game mechanic, it's like noticing the cuts in a film. You're not supposed to notice transitions in, 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 in films unless you're looking at it creatively or, ta or artistically. The transitions themselves are supposed to be so good, so well executed, that they don't draw attention to themselves. It's the definition of a good cut. And if you're spotting them, the editor's done his job wrong. It's that simple. And it's the same with games. If you're noticing the seams, if you're noticing the number crunching, then the game is not paced correctly, or it's not paced well. And that is one of my gripes with Darksiders 2 so far, which I am doing a guide for, even though the game so far is a bit of a joke, difficulty-wise. A couple of spikes, which are classic bullshit, just like Darksiders 1, but uh, I'll talk about those on that video. What I'm doing here, folks, anyway, which I should have been talking about, because there is a lot to speak about for this guide, I do apologise, I'm easily lost in tangents. Down here, if you follow the routes that I just walked on, will lead you towards a, a slab. I believe it's a red slab. And the slabs on this game are pretty much so rare that you only get one per playthrough. And you need them to upgrade weapons to their maximum. Each coloured slab... Uh, you know, correlates to a different upgrade path. And if you're interested in getting achievements and trophies, you will need to do one of each. So this is an extremely important component. And I think you can get two of these in this game, uh, in this, in one playthrough. You can get one right now. You can also get one from a side quest in this area, but I didn't do this in the guide, so you'll have to, to Google slash wiki that information. What I've just shown you down here, anyhow, is... Did you see those gangly looking octopus armed crazy eyed dudes? If you come down and you, you get aggro off them you can lead them into the holes and they'll kill themselves so you don't have to fight them. You don't have to do it but it's much easier than taking them on in this area because you might not have noticed if you knew but I'm wearing a rusted iron ring to move in the water so combat in you know un unleveled terrain is not very fun. And normally what I would do is, now that I've cleared out this area, I would go up and open the shortcut. The same shortcut which we were on the other door, in other side of the door in the previous video with the Sunlight Maggot Helm dudes. Because if you do that, not only do you have a fast way to come down and farm Demon Titanite, but it means you don't have to run through this area ever again to, to open things up. Unfortunately, I don't do it 
because this is a guide to help you get through the game really efficiently. Uh, I end up kind of screwing myself. But you're not going to see that, folks, because that's going to be edited out. I'm just going to show you all the, the salient parts that actually work. But now I've picked up the slab, we can get out of here, and then we can go to the boss door. Another thing I should have mentioned, you might have noticed that I killed a woman in robes when I got up towards the area that led to this part. She is actually one of the, I think she's one of the Sorceress Apprentices or one of the Witches of Chaos. I'm not too sure on the fiction of her, but she does some pretty nasty pyromancy. It's kind of stupid to say this, but don't get caught by any of her spells. Make sure you smash her in before she gets a chance to do them, and you shouldn't have a problem. But what you might have a problem with is what's coming up next. Through the next fog door is the worst boss on the game. It's not difficult. It's not fun. It's just bullshit. And you want to make sure that your eagle shield is up to the standards of mine before you come here, preferably. If you've got plus 15, that will help. If you've got any green blossoms, they will help. If you've got the mask of the child, that will help. You need as much stamina as physically possible to get through this. But don't worry. Uh, everybody's had hell here, and if you get through on your first time, you're extremely lucky. If it takes you a couple of times, try to, to not get too angry, because I, yeah, I could have committed some serious crimes after this. Just really bad. But thanks for watching, and you take care now.